Hey everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. I'm here with Sebastian to walk you through the topic of how chatbots can help you during the COVID-19 crisis. Now, before we get started, I need to run you through some quick logistics for this webinar. If you can't hear me, you haven't been able to hear me, or at some point the audio cuts out for you, please connect with your computer audio, not your phone. This is a very common issue with GoToWebinar. And if that doesn't work, just try restarting your GoToWebinar viewer and all should be okay. And if all else fails, and you can't watch the presentation we provide today, or maybe you just want to watch it again, we will be sending out a follow-up email with a link to the video along with links to some of the resources we present today. As a quick introduction, my name is Ilan Ilyev and I'm leading the native chat development team here at Progress. I'm extremely passionate about how technology can make life simpler, both in workspace and at home. This led to my desire to work on chatbots and in particular Progress Native Chat. Today, we will begin with a quick intro on COVID-19 impact on businesses. Then we will go through a very brief overview of how we can lessen that impact either through Q&A or step-by-step -step chatbots. After that, Sebastian will show us some demos on that topic. Before we go to questions, we will go through the pilot program that we have at Progress, in which we would help you define and build a chatbot that resolves a business problem of yours. Feel free to ask any questions as you go by using the questions tab in GoToWebinar. These days, everyone is talking about the impact of COVID-19. We all can see that every business is affected both internally and externally. The first obvious change is that many of us have moved to working from home. We have many distractions at home and our whole routine has changed. Employees are working longer hours compared to before lockdowns and this leads to burnout. In the last few months, each of us has faced delays in multiple ways. It might be the line at the grocery shop or when dealing with your bank. People have all sorts of questions and they all need immediate resolutions. This drives support demand to unprecedented levels. And I wanted to glance over how people are reacting to this delay. I'm not angry, just disappointed. And please change your whole tune, it's so repetitive. Don't bother calling X. They had me on hold for 40 minutes. And the last one is my favorite. I've been on hold with my bank for over two hours. This music has officially eaten my soul. The first set of problems I want to cover are mainly related to navigating the changes of company work processes due to COVID-19. In the beginning, HR and facility departments had to prepare people for the extended work from home. Some of the questions asked were, is anyone infected in the company? How do we talk to customers on site? Can I visit the office? Next, HR started sending surveys so they can understand the employees' opinions and hurdles. Is there a decrease in productivity? If you open the office, would you return right away? And finally, there will be questions related to returning to the office like, can I use the air conditioner? Which rooms are suitable for meetings? Is the office cafeteria open? As we already touched upon, external challenges are mainly related to support and sales communication. Depending on the business you have, support questions might vary like, can I delay the next monthly payment on my leasing? Can I have regular pregnancy checkups during lockdown? Or on the sales front, do you have contactless delivery? Are there delivery delays? Can I visit your office? The biggest problem in this situation is that both questions and answers change every day. You need an extremely flexible way to react and chatbots might be the solution that you're looking for. As a self-service tool, chatbots can be used to reduce resolution times of common issues and instantly answer repetitive questions. Chatbots are also available everywhere and 24 seven. As a result of the above, they reduce load on your team, which allows employees to focus on difficult cases that require human interaction. Ultimately, 
This minimizes the dreaded long waiting times that we discussed earlier. One way to optimize your communication flow is by answering repetitive questions using a Q&A chatbot. To train the chatbot, you need a list of Q&As, similar to the one you currently provide to your employees and customers. You can import all Q&As, and this effectively results in a ready-to-use model for your chatbot. After the training, you're going to publish the chatbot on your webpage, Facebook Messenger, Viber, WhatsApp, or other channel. And once the user asks a question, the bot runs it through the model and returns the correct answer. Let's take a look at one example for COVID-19 that illustrates a Q&A chatbot. You can build chatbots like this to satisfy both internal and external needs. As I said previously, you just need those questions and answers defined. The second way to optimize your workflow is to automate repetitive tasks. This allows your team to focus on more important tasks that require human interaction. For internal needs, you can integrate the chatbot with your human resource information system. For example, in the current COVID-19 situation, you could automate taking hardware from the office or ordering and expensing work from home equipment. Give us a shout if you're interested in integrating with HR systems like Workday, Bamboo HR, Kronos Workforce Ready, or Jobvite. We can help you implement those chatbots through our pilot program. The example I have here is a self-service chatbot. In this case, you can allow your employees to request time off directly from the chatbot and then input that in your HRIS system. For external needs, Connecting the chatbot to your support system would enable your users to easily check the status of their tickets, post updates to tickets with additional information, or log new tickets with no necessary data. A chatbot would eliminate the waiting time for completing repetitive tasks. Ultimately, your support officers will be spending more time with users who have unusual issues. All this leads to happier and more loyal users. Before I hand it over to Sebastian, I wanted to show you a demo of a bot that is helping with gathering information required for troubleshooting internet connectivity. The user reports that their internet connection is down. The bot asks for their name and address, and if they restarted the router and checked internet connectivity directly, and finally, the bot creates a ticket on their behalf. Now it's your turn, Sebastian. Hello everyone, my name is Sebastian Vitalitz and I'm a Senior Developer Advocate at Progress. So today I will show you a few things and I want to start with a quick demo of how to build a question and answering chatbot. And so I'll kind of show you from the very beginning all the steps that are required to create a chatbot but also how to maintain and what sort of things you can do with it. And my demo is going to be based on a COVID-19 Q&A chatbot that we've created that you could use as a template and you can learn more about it from this landing page. And also I wrote a couple of articles that instructs you on how to use that chatbot and how to make it your own. So if you think your company might need a Q&A chatbot for answering COVID-19 questions to your employees, this could be a great place for you to start. So let me just jump into native chat portal and show you how this is all done. So this is the native chat development platform and you can see that I already have one chatbot project here, which I will show you later on. But first thing I want to do is create a new chatbot. So I'll click over here and select the coronavirus FAQ sample. And as a name, I will say coronavirus FAQ. And what this will do is create a brand new chatbot for us. And this chatbot sample already has some predefined questions. So I could already ask things like, what is COVID-19? Or I can ask, can I work from home? And the chatbot will answer that question as well. So if you wanted to have a look where these questions and answers are coming from, we could go to the question and answering section and you can see in here that we have a bunch of categories each is containing questions and answers specific for that category so let's start by going to the meetings q a and in here we see you have three different q a's and 
it's interesting because each will have a set of questions that you could ask. So this is how you could potentially trigger this question. And then you have an answer for those questions. So let's update one of them. I'm going to click on our event status and we can, for example, add some additional questions to trigger this Q&A. So we could start by saying something like, what happened to startup, which could be a name for an event that we had at a company. And then another one, we could say, what happened to sales kickoff? And we can already test that by pressing save changes and say something like status startup. And a chat will respond with an answer. We could also update the answer to something that is more meaningful to our company. So I can change this to, uh, let's say, all upcoming live events are canceled, including startup and sales kickoff. And when I save this, we can test it once again, and I can say event status. And now we'll see the updated answer. We can also add a completely new question. So let's press here and we could add one that will give our users answers about what sort of video conferencing tools they can be using. So I can say something in the questions like video conferencing, what to use for calls, can I use Zoom and can I use Microsoft Teams? And I'll set the group name to conferencing and the answer should be something like for all calls you should use Microsoft Teams it is okay to use Zoom for external calls and you can see I'm using this new line little bit of code it's just basically telling the chatbot to split this answer into two speech bubbles and to test that I will save and ask questions like can I use Zoom and we get the answer that we provided and all works pretty nicely. If you don't like any of the questions, let's say you came here and video conferencing doesn't make sense to you, click on trash icon, press delete, and then that question goes away. So you could adopt this chatbot and make it work just for you. One last thing I wanted to show in this demo is a bit where you can do something pretty clever and say something like, I have a question about meetings. And the chatbot will actually respond with a list of available questions in that category. It is a special feature that I implemented for this chatbot. And I can, for example, say attending events and the chatbot will respond with that and then ask you again if, the, if you have some additional questions in this category. And where these values come from for each of those is basically uh, when we have a list of questions for each Q&A, we always will use the first value to display that. And if you're curious on how to implement and make it work, I'll refer you back again to these two articles that I posted in here. Uh, you could read all about it. And in there, I explain everything step by step. In the second demo, I want to show you how to create a step-by-step -step conversation. Let's imagine a scenario where we have a company support chatbot, which allows our customers to get help with their issues. And when they can't get the answer they're looking for, the chatbot should allow them to book a meeting with an expert. To make it more fun, I'll connect the chatbot to Calendly, which will check my personal calendar and give me a list of available dates and time slots. The overall idea here is to ask the user to choose a date, then choose a time slot. And then once we have that, we'll ask them for their name, email address, and provide some notes. And once we have all this information, then we can ask Calendly to book the meeting for us. And that should do the trick. Now, let me show you how this is done in practice. To create a step-by-step -step conversation, we need to implement it in a cognitive flow. First, I need to create a new conversation and I'll call it book meeting. Then I'll add one simple step of type message to say something like, hello friend. And now I can save this and copy this name over here and we'll train our chatbot when to trigger this specific conversation. So from conversation triggers, I will add book meeting and couple of message prompts like book meeting and book support session and save this. And now we can test the new conversation by saying book meeting. And the chatbot responds with hello friend. 
So far, so good. Now let's make our chatbot slightly more useful and capable of actually asking the user some questions. So I'll add a step of type question and ask the user for their name, which is of type text, and we'll ask them, what is your name? Save this. And when we test our conversation, the chatbot should ask for the name, so I can say Sebastian. Cool. Let's add a couple of other questions, like step question, and we'll ask the user for the email. It's again of type text. So what is your email address? And this time I'm going to add a little validation. So that's a reaction validation and I'll add validations of type email. And basically we are telling our chatbot to check whether the input that we get from the user looks like an email address. And if it isn't, we'll just give them an error message. So something like this is not a valid email address. Cool. And we'll add one more step of type question. And this time we'll ask the user for the notes. So again, text and we'll ask them, do you have any notes to share? And when I save this, we can trigger our conversation one more time by saying book. The child will ask me for the name. So I'll say Sebastian email sebi at blah. We're getting an error message. So I can say sebi at email.com. That looks like a valid one. Um, nothing to share. And the chatbot is pretty happy with the input I gave it so far. Cool. Now let's try to make it do something a little bit more advanced. So I have a Calendly over here, which allows me to book meetings in three of available dates. So Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday in the first week of June. And you can see each of those will have different sessions available. So I can actually query the available slots uh, by going to this URL and we'll get data in the format of like days and then which is an array. And then for each of those, we'll get a date object and then available spots. So basically you're getting a full date time uh, that is adjusted to also to my time zone, which is really cool. So let's try to do that from the chatbot. So I'll add this question actually as the first thing in our conversation here. So step type question. And we'll ask the user to give us a meeting date, which is of type date. And we'll do it by asking them what day would you like to have a call? And then to help them actually show the available dates, we are going to add a display of type quick reply. So I'm telling that I want to display some buttons with available options. And I'll add a data source which will allow me to query Calendly and display those available options. So for endpoint, I'm going to use uh, this URL. And then in order to drill to just so that I can get only the dates that are just like in here, we can use a JSON path to drill in specific pieces of data. So what I can actually do in here, uh, I can say, okay, I want to drill in into days and then I want to get all the objects from the days, but I'm specifically looking for the date property. And by using this JSON path, I can now add a selector and say, query Calendly, get all that data from over there, but only return the available dates. And when I save this, we should be able to call book one more time. And you can see the chatbot asks us, when would we like to have the call? and also gives us a list of available days, which is pretty cool. And then continues with the rest of the conversation. What I can also do in here is to add a little bit of validation. So what I can do is make sure that the provided date by the user is still within the range, because if I restart, you can see, I can say book, and then I can say tomorrow, and tomorrow is not one of the available dates uh, that Calendly should allow, but the chatbot is happy with it. So we should train the chatbot on how to recognize when the provided date is wrong. So to do that, we'll add a reactions validation. 
and we use a custom webhook validation. And I will reuse one more time the endpoint that we had before. So I'll put it over here. But I am going to make one change. So we obviously want to validate against the specified date by the user. And the date is, of course, in the meeting date variable. One thing that we will get with meeting date is we'll get it in a format that might not be necessarily the way that Calendly needs it. So we need to do a little bit of parsing. And to do that, we can use a date function. So I can say I want to parse it into a date. And then the format that I want to get it in would be year, 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 year month, month, day, day. And we should use the same thing for the end date as well. So I'll replace this. And now every time uh, a user will provide us with a date, we will basically query this endpoint with a date provided by the user. Then we can reuse the same selector. Perfect. And then once we have that, we just have to verify and check our response. So we are basically checking if our response dot length is zero. So we actually want to throw an error when this is not true. So not if response is not equal to zero, we want to throw an error and we can say something like this date is not available. Save that. And we can test it one more time, say book tomorrow. And the chat will respond with an error message saying this date is not available and ask us to choose one more time. Cool. So the next step is actually to ask our user to choose one of the available time slots. So one more time, I'm going to reuse this endpoint because that's what we'll use to query all the available slots. So let me go to the end of the step and we'll create a new step of type question. And this time, the you will ask the user to provide us with a meeting time. And that is of type time. Then we'll add a question prompt like what time. And then again, to help the user, we'll do display type, quick reply, data source. And the endpoint will be the same one as we use in the validation. And the selector is going to be slightly different because this time we want to grab all the spots. So if we just imagine that we're grabbing one record and then want to grab spots, then we can grab each specific item. And then it will be specifically interested in that start time property, but we'll use it in a second. So one thing about that is that basically we are getting a date time type of object. So we also have to use a template that will work on the start time property. So I'll use the date function one more time to take our start time. And we want to use the formatting of HHMM for this. And if I save this, we should be able to test it by saying book choose a date, and now we have a list of available slots and we can continue with this conversation. And the final thing that we need to do now that we have all the information is basically to tell Calendly to create a meeting. So I'll add a new step of type webhook and send an information to, to calendly.com slash API slash booking slash invitees. We don't need to use the headers. And then for the payload, I will use what I already have in the clipboard to save us some time. And you can see for start time, I'm using again date operator over the meeting date and meeting time to get it in the format that Calendly requires. Then for event fields, I am sending the notes provided. Time zone, I'm actually using the user time zone to make sure it is using the right format. Then we can have name for the full name and email and email address. And just to make it a little bit better, I'll add a little message that will confirm when the meeting is done. So I can say, your meeting is booked. And we can save that. We can do the final test. So book, 
let's choose the last day at 4 p.m my name is sebi i'll use my progress email address and note this should be a fun meeting and now the request is being prepared and a meeting has been booked and anytime now i should actually receive an email with the confirmation and here it is and we can see the meeting with the notes and the selected date time slot and that is all that i wanted to show you in the demo section and finally i would like to talk to you about the native chat pilot that we're working on so the idea is that if you like what you saw uh, you could actually join our pilot program where we would work with you across different phases to help you implement the first uh, chatbot so we would help you in implement a conversation scenario and also some frequently asked questions so the whole pilot would work in few phases first phase would be a requirements gathering phase would work with you to figure out what would be the best scenarios to uh, that would work for you then we'd look into the implementation phase. So this is where we would work side by side with you to help you implement the scenarios that we agreed during the requirements gathering phase. And then finally, we'll just have a sign off. So let's have a look at each of the phases. So with the requirements gathering, we would start by trying to figure out what would be the best conversation flow for your scenarios. And we would come up with some sort of a script that will cover that then would also look at the questions and answers and then build up a list of those uh, that would work best for you uh, then would also look at different deployment targets so you could deploy your chatbot to an alexa device or to a web page or use facebook messenger so in here we would figure out which deployment targets would work for you the best and would come up with the acceptance criteria which basically are the requirements and all of that will be finalized into a pilot flow agreement document the next phase is the implementation. So the way we see it working is more or less like this. We'd spend a day with you to provide you a proper training on how to use native chat and how to work with it. Then we would spend about two days on pair programming with a dedicated um, technical expert from your side. I would also spend about half a day working with you to implement those uh, questions and answers. So this would probably be done with the subject matter expert. And then also would spend about a day on setting up the deployment that we agreed on and then finally this will give you a fully working a chatbot ready to you and when that's done we'll move on to the final phase of the sign off so in there we'll do a demo to all of your stakeholders uh, we would ask for feedback in terms of how it all went and whether this is something that works for you and how what will be the best thing uh, to move forward then we'll ask for for a sign off and we'll talk about uh, the future of this pilot and where could we take it to the next stage. And then this will take us on to, to the future where you would be a happy user of native chat. So that is all that I wanted to show you for today. And if you wanna join the pilot program, you can find the link to the pilot page over here. And also if you want to learn how to build chatbots by yourself, there's a great tutorial that I prepared for you that you could just go step by step and it teaches you absolutely everything you need to know to start building native chat chatbots. So thank you for listening and I'm going to pass the microphone to Ilian. Over to you, Ilian. Okay, so just give me a few uh, seconds so I can open the questions up. And meanwhile, we can get there and uh, ask your question if you have. Uh, okay, so the first one is we have an application with Progress Open Edge database, Progress App Server and front end with Can Do UI. Uh, and the first question is uh, how to merge a chatbot with our existing application. So you can publish a native chat bot on several channels. Uh, and I would assume that if you're using a front end with Can Do, then may, most probably it's a website. Uh, and you can publish that to, to that website. And for other channels, you can use, for example, Facebook Messenger, Viber, uh, WhatsApp. Uh, so you can you can do all of those. And this is very easy, actually. So 
uh, if you if you want to do that we can help you do it the second question in that matter is uh, how to integrate a chatbot with ticketing systems such as ServiceNow uh, and you can you can use REST APIs and JSON APIs to integrate with any system and we support all of that uh, and if you need something more custom you can actually uh, contact us and you can see what we can do together the third one is where the data of the chatbot gets stored can it be stored in progress open edge so you can you can currently the, the data is stored inside the cloud the native chat cloud uh, but we are currently exploring options to give flexibility to users to uh, publish uh, those conversations from chatbots to a, a different database so this is also something on our mind as well let me see Will the chatbot collect the questions it does not understand? Yes, so, so you have history of any conversation that the chatbot uh, was exposed to uh, and it will be marked as uh, uh, something that the bot did not understand. So you will be able to see that in your history tab. Uh, can you integrate with contact center platforms like uh, NICE in contact for wife agent escalation? Uh, something That is something that we have to uh, actually explore together uh, we need to to evaluate the, the apis that are provided and most probably we will be able to to post a link inside the chatbot so users can can move there we, we have to we have to check i'm um, i'm not ready with an answer for that mm, let me see Is there ability to to augment the Q and A list by uh, model training? Uh, so yes, you can you can modify the question and answers list, uh, and we are currently exploring different models for uh, the chatbot responses and understanding. So if you have a, some something particular in mind, please don't uh, don't hesitate to contact us. How to add Slack chat? So what what we are currently uh, uh, defining as channels is, uh, uh, is is those different different uh, ways the users can use the chatbot, and Slack is one of them. Uh, so if you have a use case for that and uh, you're interested in native chat, please contact us so we can see what we can do together. Currently, those are not available publicly. Uh, and we 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 don't have it uh, out of the box, but uh, if you have an interesting use case, we can uh, talk about it and see what we can do. Uh, okay, so when integrating with external APIs, I observed there are data sources uh but can this be externally configured especially if you have to switch providers or api keys without having to hard code those api keys in the conversation script so managing uh api keys and credentials is one of the things that we uh we are currently looking into uh, because they are currently as you said managed by hard coding them in the conversation script and so a possible workaround currently is to have uh, several chatbots for different environments uh, but this is something that that we are also exploring so if you if you can provide us more information on that workflow that you're describing it will be helpful so we can we can prioritize that in the future Okay, I think those are all the questions uh, that I currently have in the question stuff. I'll, I'll leave a few uh, a few seconds so you can you can input other questions that you might have. Okay, it seems, it seems that there are no more questions coming in.
So thank you for your time and thank you for watching this webinar. And I hope uh, you, you have a use case that we can work on together.